All right, Beta Squad, let's go. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's a good name. I guess, yeah. Technically, we've never seen a beta. Even Tactics doesn't have a beta squad. So. I, I think I did check the if there were where, but just to be sure, onto the Gears Wiki once more. Maybe in the comics. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. you're uh, probably wondering uh, how I got into this situation. Watch part one to figure out how that happened. Oh, like okay. the, the yeah. music in the back. Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. Da, 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 da. You know, Pedro, Sorry. believe it. Pedro, <laughs> I'll just say this. Just be glad that, you know, they didn't do this series comic dirty like they did with Assassin's Creed. I don't know. So okay, well, okay, okay. Uh, without, without spoiling, uh, without necessarily giving specific type spoilers, and in a way that it's understandable or someone knows nothing about the story, basically there is all a major plot point. I'm not talking about where is this character or oh this character has been doing this thing before going back to another you know like that. no i'm not talking i'm talking about a major plot point was resolved in a, in a tying comic and i don't think it's on the main line like side stuff okay 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 you know i might as well just say it but without spoiling basically at the end of a certain Assassin's Creed game, what is essentially supposed to be the main villain of the entire yeah. franchise is introduced and is set free. So, you think, okay, well, we're going to deal with that villain at some point in the game series. Nope, gets killed off in the comics. Not Sorry, just that, Jova. Well, hold on, Jova, Jova. Well. Yeah, eventually, you're gone. Sorry. Because, um, okay. One new thing that uh, Gears of War Judgment introduces that will also return in Gears 4, but will not show up in 5, um, is uh, a tower defense type of mechanics. Basically, uh, you'll, have, you'll, you'll be able to put in all these uh, things like uh, fences and even cannons that help you take out any of the, of the locusts that come towards you. And, yeah, and try your best to make sure the locusts don't reach. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it, like, it, it doesn't really go all the way, you don't you have to worry about them coming to your side, like, it's not like you get penalized for it, I guess, I, maybe you lose points, but, whatever, who cares. Um, uh, yeah, and then, and now there's the next enemy away, arriving in 30 seconds, see? So basically, this, uh, this is a new, the new, the primary new gimmick of Gears of War Judgment, basically. Oh, nice. uh, RT RTS type of mechanics. They're not right. that much out. They're just it just comes across as unnecessary to me. For the sake of experimenting, RTS I guess. RTS style. <laughs> it's like weird. It's a, when I hear that, a... I normally think you're tactics. Well, no, it is where... different, Jova. Yeah, you, you can think more of something like Ratchet and Clank full frontal assault. I'm, I'm gonna have to side with Tail on this one. I think an upgrade system would be a much more natural next step rather than introduce this thing to be honest i don't really understand uh, like the point of this here uh, all right that's a, but that's about it but, uh, can, the, feel to continue because this is gonna take a while well first of all again in check 10 probably like i did last time no there is no beta squad all the squad that start with br black 4 blue troop bravo bravo 6 and bravo 3. um but no, there's also the thing, Jova. It's not like a thing that happens like immediately after. Said villain was built up from a relatively early game, and yeah. for a while the player, the player base was actually left wondering what happened, what was the master plan, what was going to happen, and then Ubisoft basically just gave up because they realized that they had no idea how to continue the modern timeline story. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I get it, you know, modern timeline stories suck, but to have a villain like that, who is pretty much from across the bounds of time, how did you not see a way to actually make the modern timelines interesting with that character? Instead, nope, just kill her off, and uh, she's dead in the comics, side material, and then basically as of the newer Assassin's Creed games, you're basically just playing as a nameless avatar now. No longer the specific named character who tied in with Steph. And okay, while the past stuff is fun and all here and there, it just really goes to show how the overall branch and narrative kind of fell by the wayside here. Like, it really feels like all they had planned for the most part was all that they did with 2, and trust me, they did a lot a heck ton of a lots of stuff with Assassin's Creed 2 before moving on from that era. But then after that, it's like, it just pittered and puttered out. But can you imagine, Pedro, if, you know, the Locust Queen 
wasn't dealt with in Gears 3, but instead escaped oh God, yeah, to Oh no, wait, not only that, but she escaped to supposedly destroy the entire world, and then... She's left as a continuous menace that you know is there, you know she's popping your revenge and everything, but that is one of the tiny comics that kills her. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Uh, it's kind of what happened also with the Infamous series, I think I mentioned this also, but yeah, uh, yeah. Although it was on more directly, but go on. Uh, it's like the uh, the Atman also brought something up that happens in Halo 5, where apparently there's something that happens in the Expedient Universe material oh, that God. Uh, that that uh, then features heavily in Halo 5. And but uh, unless you uh, uh, anyone who's stuck to only playing the games is gonna be lost. Apparently, uh, I haven't watched it in a while, so I can't go into specifics. But he did mention in, in his Halo 5 review that there's a big problem. One of many with, uh, reasons why that game is hated. Oh, well, yeah, well, Halo 5 is just it's on separate kind of forms from what I've seen. But yeah, they're Oh, oh no, we're then. not going to make it! It's let's not like that. <laughs> I mean, right, oh god, let's guys. To, let's, let's, uh, Bear, don't you know? You're not supposed to go to the East Wing. Guys, we're, you know. they're not going to make it. Even though we clearly see them all having survived to, to show up at the tribunal later, they're not going to make it. So yeah, if I do, in, we see we see only Cole and Bird there, therefore no, the others can potentially die. Actually, I don't actually, know. actually no, actually, no we, we saw, saw the others. Them. We saw oh. four of them too. Okay, Sorry. true, true. You're right. This My is, bad. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I get that it's a prequel, but making this an A in Medius Wrestling just adds doubly to the lack of suspense for certain characters here and there. Like even so, Joe, uh, they could have done something that. Uh, that that I mentioned accidentally with my mistake, have the perspective being only on Bird's side. So aside from Cole, you have no idea if the fate of these people is in balance or not. True, true, true. That would have been interesting if, you know, we see Baird walking with some unknown soldiers, but don't know if that's his team with him or not. And then later at the end, it shows that it's them handcuffed alongside him. So I uh, have to guess that these in-game cuts in you in-game are are done just for when the characters are moving from one room to another when they have to bash the door. Yeah, that's it's like the already bit... the it's already the second time it happens. Uh, I can just smell the. I can oh, just. Right. Yeah. I don't want to have Lancer wielding Cyclops drones in the air. That's the only either either either. That's the basic just of these missions. Either make the next section harder for you or not. Uh, Unless, uh, unless you've unlocked, like I said, it, it doesn't lock you perks to do these things, but I've already unlocked the only perk that that I want, which is the Aftermath mini campaign, so I don't care about it. I guess there is um, the thing that it does give you extra dialogue from Beard, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's not really worth making your life easier for yourself, sorry, harder for yourself, to be honest. Um, you know, I mean, our, okay, yeah. I will... I will give Final Fantasy XIII 2 credit, at least when you cranked up the difficulty, it could give you completely different alternate endings and branching paths. Sure, those endings well, actually, made, but... well, actually, the alternate endings have nothing to do with what uh, difficulty you Sorry, 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 um, uh, Let me rephrase that. If you took on certain super challenges or whatnot, you could unlock alternate routes and endings, like defeating Yeah, them. yeah, sure. You have to, for, yeah, sure, no, no. Well, yeah, that, that was kind of one of the big marketing things of that game to begin with, anyway, Joe, but so it's better. Um, or was, yeah. Yes, so like you, like you noticed, this is how this game is structured. You go from room to room, you beat the locusts, and rin do rinse repeat. And that's basically this game. I'd say not that, that the, the gameplay not, is not, overall. Not, not, not that the game, there are zero, and I mean zero set pieces, too. Oh, like, no. Like, oh, there's, no. No, there's no moment where you're in a car in a turret, there's no moment where... Uh, you're in a giant monster worm? No, 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 no. Like, you're just in a closed-off room fighting locusts. It's, it's literally... It's a very point. arcade experience, I guess, when... It's a, oh. it's, it's a very arcade-like experience, yes. Uh, and not only that, but you've got a gameplay style that's completely shifted from the norm. You can tell this game had a shorter development time and budget because yeah. uh, yeah, you can, that, that's why they couldn't afford to do anything more than this. And normally you'd be able to see that, that the gameplay is signed, but the gameplay has such a radical shift that if anyone is used to the past three games, they could have trouble getting into this. Sort of like me with well, Fossil. I, huh? I, I will agree with you on the random and completely unnecessary 
different button mappings, Sonic Unleashed style, but aside from that, honestly, the RTS stuff and the, the classified mission stuff is so minor and who cares that it doesn't really change anything to me, if you ask me. Oh, well, I was talking mainly about, you know, the controls, actually. Well, yeah, well, like I said, that's, it's Sonic Unleashed type of problem, where they map the, the homing attack button to the X button or square button if you're playing on a PS3, instead of, you know, keeping as it always has been with the, with the same button as the jump button. <laughs> um, it, there, there's literally no reason for this change. It's done for, it, it, like, it's, it, it makes no sense. All it does is throw people off, and lo and behold, they immediately drop this right after this game, just like Sonic Unleashed did. So, yeah, this is literally a, one of those what the fuck were they thinking moments that makes no sense and has literally no justification possible. It changes nothing. It, it's, literally, it's literally if I made a Mario game. Uh, where B is jump and A is run. It makes no sense to do that because nobody... Because it, it, all you're gonna accomplish with that is throw Mario fans off. If anything, it's using all the old school mentality that the, the old PlayStation had for regional difference, where Japan had the circle and Xbox on Switch to compare to what the, the what Western fan base does for all PlayStation games where normally, you know, X is confirmation and uh, Circle is uh, cancelled, while for Japan is the, the opposite. Hmm. The problem is, this is not a Japanese-made game. Yeah, exactly. So like, what, what was the point? So the, like, and, and even then, and even then, too, was anybody, anybody out there really asking for a throwback to those days? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, it literally makes no sense. That's the basic thing. Like, uh, Dwebs, imagine... Let me put it this way, Dwebs. Um, the imagine if they made a Pokemon game where... Very much to instead of... Uh, you know how in Pokemon games you press A to confirm in the menus and B to cancel or go back yeah. and stuff like that. Imagine if the, imagine if the next Pokemon generation uh, had the reverse. B to accept and A to cancel. Wow, well, that I'm, I'm guessing it will throw you off a bit for quite a while because you messes messes with your muscle memory. Well, uh, well, Paige, I already know the feeling having played a few Japanese PS1 games. I keep thinking X. Uh, yeah. I, I, my mind is trying to think that X means proceed, but in Japan it's yeah, circle. Yeah. X is like go backwards. It, re it, it really is a ch like so. Yeah, I think I've already made my point clear. It's a pointless change that makes no sense, mm -hmm. and it and it's stupid. All right, section done. Where to next? The, I think this is also the end of Baird's first testimony, I think. Yeah, we're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, side note. Oh, let me show the cutscene. Well, that happened. Well, that, that all right. Happens. No, no, okay, no, no, all right, never mind, never mind. There's still one more. Okay, Let me go guess, ahead, boss. East Wing. No, I, I, it's funny. I was right now uh, uh, searching potentially if uh, the development team actually did say the interviews and explanation for this uh, button change. And I love how the. I was trying to type why Gears of War judgment, uh, you know had the change controls, but uh, right as I was typing, the first couple of options are why Gears of War 5 is bad, why Gears of War 4 is so big, why Gears of War Judgment is bad, why Gears of War 2 is not on PC, and why is Terminator in Gears of War? So <laughs> I think that speaks cur for the current well, panorama. Uh, it's interesting you, you found that tale, because those are a lot of things that, that, uh, that, that the Gears fan base are really... Um, Asking themselves, it. yeah, it, it, it's very like fans don't really care much for the whole crossover Smash Brothers style multiplayer thing that Gears Five is mm. doing because it's okay. Uh, like here's the thing about it, like there's nothing really special about it. It's essentially a glorified skin. Not only that, Gears has never really been one thing to lend itself much to the crossover factor. Like now, that's not to say that a crossover between it and something wouldn't be cool. But compare something like Gears to something like Halo, which has the ever-iconic Master Chief. He is a lot more open to crossovers, especially if how much people want a Metroid and Halo crossover. Just because it of just the similarities of the two protagonists. It just comes across as a, a gimmick to attract extra buyers, to be honest. 
Also, did you seriously say that that one sentence was why Gears 4 is so big? I don't know. Gears 4 is not really big. Gears 4 I, like... It was just one of the potential results of a Google search. I don't know why people ask it. I mean, I but, can understand uh, that question for 5, but 4? Maybe. Exactly. Maybe they're talking about the open world or something with four. But anyway, no, I but that's in five, though. He said, he said, he said the no, no, was four. four. Yeah, yeah, the question was for four. Anyway, I checked. Uh, there are no official interviews. The closest I can I can found was a discussion on Game Facts about the game, and the, the closest people theorized of an answer was I think it was to make the game faster. No longer have to go down to the D-pad to switch two buttons to use three of your weapons. This includes frags. Get to think more about what weapons you carry now, but your limited tech home is still there. Yeah, I don't know. A, it, it, okay, yes, okay. Technically, yeah, you can still use the grenades. And by the way, grenades are on the Y button or triangle button for those. So we, we just had a dedicated button to grenades. Yeah, instead of just selecting the grenades from your thing using the D pad, you have a dedicated grenade button. Not that I'm, I'm not saying that's by any means a bad idea, it's just, uh, again, the rest of the game plays exactly like Gears 3, so I don't understand what exactly they thought they were accomplishing with, with completely reinventing the comp Like, it doesn't... Well, re it don't you see, Pedro? I mean, they have a clearly acclaimed Gears 3, so they thought, you know, we want to be bold and think outside the box. So clearly they wanted to go off on guard. That's why they totally threw away an already winning formula from a critically acclaimed and very well fan popular game mm -hmm. because that totally makes sense right I got bizarro land I bet they do too stay ready I'm sure in uh, uh, I'm sure in some planets that your logic is sound but your weakling is this is earth <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, again you know I mean whereas the later games would become annoying or in Gears 5's case infuriating for fans this game is more just baffling this book this game okay at the end of the day this game is not even bad per se it's just really mediocre like i said yeah, like i said that, it but... it's mainly more of the baffling variety in the case where you just have to wonder why but the best yeah sorry go ahead you just have to wonder why are things this way why is the gameplay changed up so much when they already had a winning formula by three and why is the narrative presented this way, even though we've clearly seen that these writers can do better? I can explain the controls, but I can explain the rest. Uh, simple. Uh, this game was made quickly and cheaply because Epic wanted one final Gears game to make some more extra money uh, before they ended it because, uh, you know, they, they were already planning on not continuing it uh, further after this. I wonder if this uh, game they sold, though. It. Yeah, it sold well, it decently enough, because remember, this was back when the Gears franchise was still relevant, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, it, it did sell well, just based on the on the name of the franchise in particular. I <laughs> uh, it probably sold better than Gears 5, from what I've heard. No, no, no definitely, like, uh, the, this game came out in a very different time than Gears 5 did, so mm -hmm. no, definitely. I don't even need to check the sales figures, I can already... Gears 5 sold so abysmally that I don't, that I'm, that I'm that confident in my, in what I'm saying right now. That's how confident I am. Yeah. But anyway, no, no, that's the thing, Teo. The best thing you can, look, the best, here, here's, here's the, the big, I'll give this game credit. It functions. The plot, while, while not that interesting, functions. The gameplay, while not that interesting, uh, and doesn't bring anything to the table, it functions. The graphic function. The music functions that's the best way that's the best way i can tell you about this game too. it functions it, 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 it functions that's the basic gist of it okay it's 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 mechanically and technically sound <laughs> <laughs> so this is still happening again you know it's weird and uh, because of the rts elements and the various waves yeah it also created you can tell the developers were trying their best to stretch out these sections as much as they possibly could to try to make this um a full size gears game and even then it's still by far the shortest gears game of all oh hey a blue mark at least there was some. Uh, so basically, never mind that. so basically, it's just a broomark going, "Hey, I'm in the game." Please Hi. be excited. 
Seriously, I mean, okay, in a regular Gears game by now, we'd have had at least the few new varieties of Locust or Lambent going on for free by now. Now, granted, I get it. Since this is technically a prequel, it would hurt the canon for us to find species of Locusts that we have not seen before because uh, I guess that would mean that the people should have been aware of other variants. Like, obviously we can't have Lambent yet, so fair enough, but... It is kind of a shame that they didn't try and stretch their creative bones in some way, shape, or form. Granted, maybe they wanted to stick to the lore and, you know, it, maybe it wouldn't make sense if we found new locusts. But again, why not have a return of some of the older bosses in some shape or form? Or at the very least, give us a Brewmark fight. Mm-hmm. So, does this game at least have, like, the uh, an enemy commander, you know, unit specific, like the arrival of your squad, uh, similar to how Scorch was in Gears of War 2 or Ram in the first game? Really, no. It, Sorry, too. I guess, to be fair, this is kind of a slippery slope with some prequels here. In fact, in fact uh, neither 4 nor 5 have. Nothing that is... Well, okay, okay, okay. What, from what you told me, 4 is mostly robots, so I don't think it makes sense for them to have a command unit like that. Okay, okay. if I'm going to... without spoiling anything, eventually an equivalent of that appears in 5, but by, that, by, by the time that happens, we're already in the climax of the game, so... Okay. Nice. I think, okay, I'll admit, part of a slippery slope of prequels is knowing how to scale your frets here. Like, if you have a fret in the prequel that... Highly oh, out. That's, that's one of the that's one of the best moments in the game for me. Locust eggs. All right, not an interesting. Basically, the locust have actually dropped a lot of eggs uh, on here. So, and one of the possible missions you can make for yourself is destroy all the eggs to prevent. Uh, yeah, well, okay, to again uh, the, the, to prevent the later locusts from popping out and getting you. Exactly. Here. Yeah, that's what, that's what I do. That is well, yeah, neat. You, did you, hear that? you can do that as an ultimate mission, and now cuts. Oh, it's you again. Well said, Cole. Well said. <laughs> so yeah, the this this enemy from Gears 3 returns. It's yeah, we already saw one before, and I think the first part. The thing is, uh, like at least now we know how a song capacity of how the Lotus Ripper deals, uh, they lay eggs, uh, there's that I guess. Uh. So is so it, so I gotta wonder, can Ram lay an egg, or...? Well, um, that depends, it depends on how the species, on how uh, they, they work, uh, do they have male and female genders? I mean, well, remember, like, uh, they, mm, at least, at least if, uh, uh oh. Well, we know that the queen is female, we know that. Yeah, but... no, 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 we know also that the berserkers are apparently also female, considering they're also referred as she. Huh. All right, then. All right, so basically, I'm assuming, Joe, it's the traditional way. The male <laughs> impregnates the female, and the female lays eggs. Probably. That's probably how it is. Probably. So do we ever get to see these locusts come out of their eggs, or is it like something that, you know, happens off screen? Uh... We don't get egg hatching in this game, no, but we do get cocoon hatching in the next game. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. So I guess we're to assume that, you know, the eggs, if you do leave them around, will hatch off screen later and thus will result in more locusts out to get you. Uh, uh, is, the eggs are only here as a, as a, an object for a, the optional mission thing. They're, the, the, the eggs don't really get acknowledged after this section. Sorry. Oh, well. It's just there as a as an as a secondary objective that you can choose to pursue, really. Kind of a shame, and does go back to my point about how this game doesn't really seem to try new stuff when it really could. Like, okay, I get that maybe we shouldn't see a stronger variant of an enemy before because then that would kind of make you know the actual mainline trilogy feel kind of trivial in comparison. But man, something we haven't seen before is locusts hatching out of eggs and seeing their larval states or whatnot, so that could have been an interesting new thing to see. I'm assuming, Joe, but the rush development also applies to the story. This is like something that they conjured up on the fly, and that's why it's so simplistic and not, doesn't really have that much to it. It really be that Gears. way, don't it? <laughs> Even by gear standard. Yeah, every, it is kind of a shame. I mean, because the stakes in this game are never really all that palpable. Like, like the Gears games, even for as simple as they were, they always had some really good stakes in the conflict that was going on, especially free. 
Um, See, now, this game, this... Oh, in this game, you're just like, like you yourself said, Joe, we're just watching flashbacks from 90% of this bloody thing. Uh, not only so that, we know, but th so we know how things are, go, are gonna go, so whatever. Yeah, this is gonna be flashbacks of a war where we know the outcome. We pretty much know who's gonna live or die. Now, you know what could have better stakes? Something happening during the Pendulum War, since, okay, by the context of the games yeah. themselves yeah. here. But, yeah, me and Joe would keep repeating this over and over, but trust me, audience, that's, it, it literally boils down to that, I assure you. I might as well go into detail why the Pendulum War scene would have been better. First of all, yes, we sort of have an idea of how the Pendulum Wars went, but we don't know the incredible specifics of it, you know, even between Except, this and the comics here and there. Like, but, 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 to see Joe, that's because you should read the comics. Ah, yes, but here's the thing, though. Imagine if somebody hasn't read the comics. Now, the Pendulum Wars, thankfully, weren't something that the games ever needed to rely on. But because of that, there's a lot of there's people a who don't bed. know... A lamb in there? No, 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 well, remember, uh, yeah, that might as well correct job on that. Uh, well, that's the thing. Uh, to remember, if you even go back to Gears 1, there were lambs in Gears 1. So yeah. at, the t at the time... Oh yeah, we just didn't know that they were. We, we, it's it's just that they were literally just starting to appear by around this point in the timeline, and they only started becoming. They only started. Uh, the, the gears only started really acknowledging them in a serious way when they became numerous. And you know they, when the ending of Gears Two kind of led to them being massacred. Yeah, like mm -hmm. remember, like in Gears One, we only need like uh, like five of them in one section, and in this game, we also they're, they're also equally limited. So at the time, it makes sense that they wouldn't really. Sp okay, this one in particular exploded for no reason, but whatever, maybe. You know, it kind of makes you wonder if the narrative with the Lambins was planned out in advance, or 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 do you think maybe those Lambins may have been put in the version of Gears One that we commentated on? And maybe they weren't in the original Gears one. I haven't played uh, the original 360 version. It's still it's still widely available through Game Pass and shit. So people are still perfectly capable of trying it out themselves. I'm not. I'm personally not interested. Like uh, that's the version that Microsoft considers the the definitive, and most fans do as well. Anyway. So, oh, I get whatever. that. I get that. I get that. I'm just the only real issue, people. Uh, the only real issue I've heard some some of the veterans brought up against the ultimate edition is that they prefer the art style of the original 360 version, the more gray aesthetic. Um, but outside of that, I haven't heard any complaints. Go ahead. I get what you mean. I'm just wondering if, like, well, you know, the Lambent that we saw in our play for Gears One. If they were like only added as like a later thing, or if like the idea of the Lambin was something narratively thought of since the start of the first game, actually. What have they done I wouldn't be surprised if it's the former. Thanks, Cole. Yes. There we go. There you go, guys. Cole, uh, Cole had a line. Yes. <laughs> It's and like the it's like the writers just it's like the writers just suddenly around, but oh yeah, Cole's in this game. Uh, yeah, yeah, Cole, uh, Cole that's the thing, Gribs. Uh, you might you, he might as well be a whole new character long. at this point. But look, guys, he was there with Barrett all along. Yeah, he didn't do anything. He was there. I was sure there. I didn't yes. do anything. I was sure there. <laughs> Yeah, it was me in bed. It was us all along. Alright, I, all right, I think, if I remember correctly, this is the last section of Baird's first testimony. Let's see. We shall see. Oh god, heavy dust with it. Fuck this mission. I tried this mission in my first playthrough that I did before I recorded this one. Fuck that mission. Basically, here's what it does. You you start you see this place? Yeah. Okay, nothing mm -hmm. nothing specific in the world about it. Now imagine this section with a shit ton of fog where you basically can't see shit. That's basically the super duper hard mission of uh, version of this of this section. Anyway, I'm not even. A, it's playing a cover based shooter where you can't see shit because that's not a recipe for stupidity at all, is it? Or frustration? Like. <laughs> uh, you're about to say this. Um. Uh, oh, uh, there, there's the plot twist. I was Joker all along. 
Anyway, uh, the squad here is known as the Kylo Squad. Oh, is it a Kylo? Yeah. Kylo. Oh, yeah. oh, so these were the Knights of Ren. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give them credit. They did more in here than they did in Rise of Skywalker. Okay. No, okay, okay, okay. Now that Jova brings it up, yes, I do remember them occasionally mentioning the term Kylo Squad. I swear to you, I, I completely forgot. I apologize, audience, because this game is so forgettable that I, I genuinely forgot. I'm not even kidding. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, and I played this, and I played for this game twice, for the record. Like once as a once to get used to it, and right after uh, again, so I could record. What you're watching is my second my second playthrough. Uh, so I played for this game twice, back to back, and I still forget details like those. That's that's how memorable this game is to me. Good idea. Amazing. So, out of the other two, Pedro, who's your favorite on the Kylo squad, aside from <laughs> Baird and Cole? Oh, okay, I was about to say Baird, but sure. Um, <laughs> I guess my favorite of the new ones is Paddock, <laughs> because he's the only one who has some kind of a personality. Yeah. And I guess he brings some novelty, being a uh, Gorazmi we haven't seen before. Yeah, you know, uh, um, he basically is uh, much like the the Soviet Union types. He's very anti-cog. He's only you know, he's only working with Baird in this particular situation because um, uh, because he uh, because of obligation. There's there's kind of a mini little arc uh, for him where he le he learns to realize that not all cog are bad. In fact, he, he mentions this in Gears 5 when we meet him again, where Bear showed me that um, not all cogs are bad and stuff like that. The problem is, it's only, it's never properly mentioned in this game. It's only mentioned in Gears 5. Oh, okay, so, so I'm guessing that was supposed to be the payoff of what I got from Gears Judgment, I guess. But we never really see Haddock really do anything like even when he, even when it's time for his testimony all he talks about is what happens either, either, nothing in this game actually happens in terms of character for development really not yeah, it's, really it's about to ask what about hendrick uh who, sophia hendrick like, the redhead okay. like I, I, I just usually i just usually call her um uh uh cadet lightning um <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Whenever I hear that voice, I just think lightning. <laughs> I don't blame you. She really does sound like a dead ringer for her. But yeah, what about her? It's not lightning voice. That's the thing, Joe. But you can tell. My guess is the people who made this game played Final Fantasy XIII, and they saw how, you know, she was supposed to be the strong female of that game. So they figured, hey, you know that voice you gave to lightning? You use that. That's probably the direction she, she was given. If I recall correctly, uh, Sophia also shows up in later games too. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll talk about that in the aftermath campaign of this game because uh, sadly, Job, uh, Sophia is not going to stick around for long. Oh god. She's oh well. Wow. She's about to get Alicia, isn't well, she? We call in and make sure uh, not. Going well, on. that's the thing. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's just say her departure, quote unquote, is not going to please do it because of how it goes on. Oh, uh, let me guess, someone dies off screen. Good job. Let's the only see. way, you know, you know, you know, the only way that could be worse is if it yeah, this, yeah, this, I hate that trope. I hate that trope in any view, but it's even worse in a, in a game, in a, well, a genre like this. You know, you the know, only I mean, way you know, could an be... action game, you know, full of, you know, war. Takes people dying off screen in a in a uh, in a job in a, in the in the body war oh, genre. Look. Colonel, what about oh. the light mass missile? We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> wow. There you go. There you go. Uh, the colonel, the colonel, the colonel literally basically just said, "Shut up, woman. The men are talking." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now go back well, to the, the kitchen. The, the with previous trilogy did not. That. Where does this come from? It really comes the fudge out of nowhere. Like I mean, you could, I mean, you could say Actually, it's a prequel, and they grew well, out of it after this. Actually, that's you wonder, Pedro. This was 
written by Tom Diesel, right? Book written by him and another guy who never wrote after this. Well, I, I it, like I have no evidence to prove this, but I do generally wonder if they were just planting the seeds just so they could excuse their own narrative later on. You know, you know, you know. It's funny you bring up it being a prequel. So, but here's the problem, though. We have read some of the comments that took Hold place. On. Yeah, basically the the. What are, the, what are called these cars? Basically, basically, when they first tested the the hammer of dawn, uh, Goros Naya suffered the effects, and there you go. Um, here's the effect of your boom. So, and that's the main reason why Paddock doesn't lock the car. To fire that thing, you have to get the targeting beacon, the launch codes, personally activate the missile on site, and get this all approved by command. Wow, it's a, it became a lot more simple in later kill. games. So, Maybe it's just call him up, order strike. Use it to kill General Khan. Any objections? <laughs> okay, uh, that, that, uh, was funny. <laughs> that was actually funny. That, uh, yeah, I will give it that. Again, yeah, like I said, Paddock is the only character in this game that has some kind of a personality. <laughs> anyway, um... That's not prepared, of course. But yeah, here's I'm the also, thing. Sorry, go on, Jova. About that line regarding oh, the oh, whole... Oh, 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 Jova. Um, you can talk about it later. There we go. That was the end of Berg's testimony. I'm curious to hear what it takes to convince an Onyx Guard cadet to steal one of the COG's most powerful weapons. I was against it, sir. That's right. Run to daddy. Maybe you could... Excuse me, you two. You are in the court of law, supposedly. And look what he's got. Yeah, exactly. Oh, crap. No, don't want to move because it's still a court martial. Yeah, seriously, like, don't you want to move this somewhere? Like, is this really important? Sorry, Teo, but uh, the Colonel really wants to hear their testimony. Colonel, I'm an academy. You're in the middle of a war! Okay, it, this is actually You're a good segment because accuracy. I was about to talk to talk about her for a second. I'm not sure about her facial expression, about Sophia's uh, facial expression. She looks a bit. Weird compared to the previous female characters' models, but gone. Anyway, Go before ahead. we end off, but that's the thing though. It's like, well, okay, you could argue, oh, maybe it's a prequel, so this is back when they were sexist. The problem with that is that we've read the comics which take place during the Pendulum Wars, and there we've seen several women in high command, most notably Anya's, Anya's mother, Helena. Yeah, Anya's mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. She had zero problems with sexism in the comics that we read in the Ultimate Edition. So, so what the fuck is this? Me thinks so, that so, it's them trying to create the false drama. It's a so the colonel uh, is not only an asshole judge, he's also a fucking sexist pig. Nice to know. Thanks, game. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, um... Tune in, next time for, for, tune in next time for Gears of Misogyny. <laughs> See you then. Gears of Misogyny. See ya. See ya. Uh. Mm.